What's up, guys? Welcome back from the MLG Studios here in New York City. You're currently watching the MLG Winter Exhibition Tournament involving all the losers from round one of the Winter Championship event. We started with 16 and we're down to six. Did I do the math right? Yes. Yes! I'm Axel Toss, joined by Axlav. Currently, Sase is down one to two to Hero going into game number four. Before we get into game number four, though, Full Sail University, fullsail.edu slash MLG. If you're looking to have a career in the video game industry in graphic design, video game production, uh, video game design, definitely look into Full Sail. Of course, if you go to that website, they'll have you fill in some information about what you're after, and then they'll send some information right back at you. So you can see if Full Sail is the right fit for you. That being said, shall we advance in the game four? Let's do it, of course. Match point if Hero wins this game number four here on Newkirk City. He's going to win the whole series. So yeah. Slossite has got to fight back. Uh, this map is very kind of linear. If you want to cross through the middle, you have to go via uh, a route by either one of two watchtowers. You can see one watchtower there. The other one is right across yep. on the other side. And uh, whichever way you play, if your opponent controls those watchtowers, they're going to see you coming. Absolutely. And a very important game here for Sase. Of course, he is your red Protoss player in the bottom left-hand location. Representing Team Fnatic, one of three foreigners left in this tournament. Can he make a comeback and win two in a row? Definitely has the skill to do so, but his opponent in the top, in the bottom right hand location, will have something to say about that. He is the blue Protoss player from Team CJ Entis. He is their ace player, considered. It's usually between him and Woro, I would say. He oh, is... Woro's on Samsung Con. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hero and Hydra, yes. Yeah. Why do I always get that? It's the, the well, RO at the end. Yeah. That really gets me. <laughs> and honestly, like, when I first heard about the Pro League guys coming into uh, StarCraft 2, those are the two guys who I'm like, oh, man, they're going to be good. Roro and Hero. They're, those were the guys who I always heard stories from, from Major. Oh, Major yeah. <laughs> and, and Vibe. They're like, oh, they're really good. So for some reason, I always associate them together. But yeah, of course. Hero's on CJ, uh, Royals on Samsung Con. But Hero, he's only one win away here from advancing to the next round to play the winner of Creator and Thursday. That match will be tomorrow. That is going to be exciting. Uh, I mean, the, the really cool thing about that is that both players love going to the late game, and both players are late game specialists. And, and something we've seen, at least so far, from the MLG Winner Championships, the only Protoss that was successful versus Terran was MC. And it was pretty much solely from building Oracles and killing your opponent fast before they could really utilize the, those medevacs. Um, so I'm really excited to see Creators play against Thorzane, and of course Thorzane's play against Creator, because they're very, they're both pretty unique players in that matchup. Hero going to be scouting here very early, which is a little bit interesting considering we kind of agreed that scouting on two base or scouting when there are two locations, Hero didn't like to do, but if there's more than two possible locations. One, one location, I should say, where your opponent can spawn, and that's where you just go. But here, he knows there's only two spawns in this map, but still deciding to scout, being very annoying with this probe. Yeah, uh, interesting move here. It could be, you know, he's seen the DT rush three games in a row. Mm -hmm. And he could be like, well, he, he very well may likely do that again, but there's also the chance that he's just going to mess with me by, like, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you do a DT rush one game, and the second game your opponent will often assume you're not going to do it. Because, like, who does DT rush two games in a row? Yeah. But after he does it a second game, you're like, oh, he's not going to do it again. And after he does it a third game, you're like, well, I don't even know. Like, he, he might just keep doing this every game, or he might try to mix things up because after three games in a row, I wouldn't suspect it. So Hero might be a little bit, uh, you know, he's really unsure. Because DT rush is typically something no one does multiple times in a row. But Sase has shown he's willing to do it. And now Hero's, Hero doesn't know when it's going to stop. And, and, and unfortunately for him, of course, oh. Sase was able to push that probe out before building that Stargate. Uh, so Hero, he, you know, he, he might still be thinking DT. Yeah, he might very well be. Um, of course, the Stargate was placed down there by Sase in the back of his face. Hero currently boosting out two Stalkers here. Oh, and Sase even sent that, that probe around uh, to build those proxy pylons. Hero found it, though. Uh, so he's going to be looking for other proxy pylons. He's even checking. Uh, he's got a probe scouting around. He's got his stalkers on patrol. And he's going to put on some pressure. Yeah, he's got three very fast stalkers out here on the field. I have to see how much damage he can do there. Also, the Mothership Core making his way across. But Sase has the Phoenix about to finish. So if Sase decides to send that across towards his opponent's main base, then he will be able to spot that Mothership Core and potentially take it out before the stalkers can help supplement. 
He definitely couldn't. And one of the big things here, uh, Sasuke could either go for that Mothership Core kill, or he could try to hide his Phoenixes, and Hero might end up force getting field. an Oracle. Got a Force Field. Okay. Great Force Field there. And of course, he has energy for a second Force Field. That's why he get a Sentry so early, so it's two Force Fields. Oh, the Sentry's got to keep that alive to get one more Force Field off. He's getting He's targeted down. He's that. like, all right, I'm probably going to die, but I'm going to put down that Force Field before I do oh, the Phoenix. Phoenix comes to the rescue. Forward. The second Phoenix is just now going to be popping out here. Three Zealots, actually two Zealots in the Sentry being warped in here for Sasuke. And the Force Field goes down behind the Stalkers, but just like that, there's the recall. Oh my god, Hero was so close to just losing the game right there, but uh, he yeah. had that recall available. Great if he lost all three Stalkers yeah. and the Mothership Court, that would game pretty over. much have been game there because Sasuke could easily expand and deny Hero's expansion at the same time. Uh, going forward here, I feel like Sasuke will have a small teeny edge because he's going to be ahead in that Phoenix count. Uh, in fact, actually, he's delaying Phoenix for a second to get that expansion up. So Interesting. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, which I don't really... It's not going to be a big deal. Let's see. One, one Phoenix is already on the field here for Hero. But he has three, so it's okay. He's still going to yeah. be ahead in Phoenix count. As long as he resumes production as soon as possible. But you know what? I don't think he realizes Hero's going Phoenix. So that's why he got Phoenix production. Because, uh, you know, if, if Hero was going Mass Blank Soccer, then of course he wouldn't be ready to get the Rubble. He's getting the Rubble right now. Oh. Oh, now he sees the Phoenixes, but he's taking some losses. One Phoenix goes down. Uh, one for each side. Two now for, for uh. Sase. Okay, that's definitely a better trade for Hero. Units lost, though, should be interesting. Oh, 675 at, to 250. Look at the immediate reaction by Sase, canceling the robotics second and building a second start, which is what I you like have it. to do. Yeah. Uh, if, if both players go Phoenixes, you pretty much are committed to trying to get more Phoenixes in them because uh, Phoenixes are almost useless against other Phoenixes if they're outnumbered. Right. So if you kind of give up the Phoenix race, yes, you can transition to go Templar and stuff, but then the Phoenixes you've already made all of a sudden lose their value and you're just kind of behind by that a bit. Yeah, so we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on the Phoenix count now. Here, interestingly enough, is not going to be adding on a, a second Stargate at this point in time, but he's going to be able to scout out his opponent's intentions fairly soon. Hallucinated Phoenix heading on in there, seeing one Stargate, and he should see the... Oh, I don't oh. know if he did. He might have might have missed that. Let's, let's take, yeah, he, I don't he think he saw he it. He did not see it. Yeah, there's no no vision of that second Stargate Now, could from he see Europe. the additional Phoenixes and be like, all right, you have three Phoenixes, you should only have one. I remember killing two back there. Uh, it's been enough time. I mean, he actually hasn't even built anything from the second starting yet, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, that's the first one being built. So, right. Tommy wise it, it won't give it away quite yet. It'll be another minute or two before it becomes kind of obvious. Uh, he was building that second Stargate as well, but he's he's going to be a little bit behind. And, and Sasa is already trying to grab that weapons upgrade. Uh, I'm curious as to the weapons upgrade over the Fleet Beacon. Uh, in general, I see Protoss tend to try to get that range upgrade as soon as possible because Range Phoenixes absolutely slaughter non-range Phoenixes because you can generally try to kite away and even if they can get a range hit a couple of your Phoenixes, a lot of their Phoenixes will be out of range, whereas all yours will always be in range. I, I'm actually having flashbacks of a game between... Um, it was Zero, actually. Seed and... Well, the, the, that might be one, but Seed and, okay. and Rain. Oh, game. yeah. Remember so where, forgot the yeah, range. Seed forgot the range. Of yeah, he, actually, he got the Fleet Beacon. Yeah, he got the Fleet Beacon before, and we're like, he was he was ahead. Yeah. But then he misclicked. He clicked the Carrier Interceptor upgrade. Yeah. And that was such a shame because it's the same resource cost, but I mean, it's useless unless you're building carriers. So it wasn't so useful in that situation. And if you, if you missed that, um, that was actually in our top five blunders, which is currently on the YouTube yeah. channel. Uh, top five blunders from the Winter Championships. Definitely check that out. Oh, uh, Hero's getting the Fleet Beacon instead of the attack upgrade. And some interesting facts for, for those of you guys who, who don't know this, but in a Phoenix Mirror, one attack upgrade doesn't actually do anything at all. Uh, a Phoenix with no attack upgrades kills another Phoenix in nine hits. A Phoenix with an attack upgrade kills other Phoenixes in nine hits. Uh, so unless there's other things like sentries and stalker support or multiple upgrades being factored in, that first attack upgrade, attack upgrade is not going to help Sase. But the range upgrade that Hero's getting uh, will basically make it, it, it it's, it's a game breaker. If you have range and they don't, you just it's really hard to lose. 12 to 11 right now in favor of Sase. Of course, uh, it, a lot of it is going to depend on... Where on the map are you going to end up uh, engaging? Here we go, Sase trying to take one out, does take one Phoenix out, and these guys are going to be exchanging blows at the moment. Still 11 to 9 out in favor of Sase. Two ahead. Stalker's coming back here to try to help the, the cause. Taking out a probe there at the natural. Here we're going to try to re-engage once more. It's now 12 to 11. Definitely keeping an eye on that unit tab. Sentry and Stalker's oh, helping Hero's a little bit from below. Traits. Oh, Look yeah, he is. Oh, he's catching up to the Phoenix. He's here doing a great job here. Sase trying to reinforce with additional Phoenixes of his own, but Hero is going to have the advantage here, I think. Very close, though. Four to three now in favor of Hero. So uh, the important thing here is going to be 
the, uh, the range upgrade. The range upgrade. It's it's about to finish, and Sase just now adding on that fleet beacon. So Hero is definitely going to have a timing here, where he can get a significant amount of damage done with what, the superior range. What Sase is going to have to do is, is until he can catch up in range, have to be very defensive and use his other gateway units to support his phoenixes. Use photon overcharge to to keep uh, Hero from from basically doing too much damage until he can catch up in the range upgrade. Once he does though, and once he gets that armor upgrade complete. Uh, he's actually going to have an advantage due to the upgrades, but he's got to survive to that point first, and that's going to be tricky if Hero presses his advantage right now. Yeah, I think Sase needs to keep his anti-air near him. However, that doesn't involve a whole lot. We just got a couple sentries. Three Zelds seeing. bravely heading out. Uh, unfortunately, Hero, of course, uh, has plenty of energy. Those Zelds are going to be taken out very, very quickly. Sase is moving to engage, oh, he's gonna try to but engage he has no range upgrade. The range upgrade belongs to Hero and not to Sase at this point in time. But Hero's going to start taking advantage of that. Sase desperately trying to close the gap. Unitab shows 6 to 4, 6 to 3 now in favor of Hero as far as the Phoenix upgrade is concerned. Sase is going to try to retreat to his natural expansion. Keep in mind, Sase does have the Photon Overcharge ability on the Munchkin Core that can help with anti air at the natural expansion. And the range upgrade is about 60% of the way done. But both these players are producing Phoenixes at the exact same rate. So Hero right now, he has a five Phoenix advantage. And so I'll that say we'll have that upgrade advantage anywhere. though. Yeah, uh, that's as, true. as soon as he gets that plus one armor, uh, he'll be able to kill Hero's Phoenixes in nine hits. Hero's Phoenixes will take 10 hits to kill Sase's. Sase, in fact, is adding an additional third target as well. So right now, Hero has a food advantage, he has a Phoenix advantage. But as time goes on, now the range is, is equalized. I think it will favor Sase if Sase can kind of uh, wait for long enough for that third target to kick in and for him to kind of reclaim uh, the, the equal numbers. Hero coming forward, looking for his opponent's units, looking for his oh, opponent's two Phoenixes. photon cannons, but I think the Phoenixes may just ignore those, but they're afraid of being broadsided by Sase's Phoenixes. Of course, you can run in there and lift up your opponent's probes, but if their Phoenixes come in while you have several Phoenixes that are stuck using a lift animation, you may get slaughtered, so it's very dangerous to, to, to go for those probe runs. The other thing to, to, to consider is that these battles, phoenixes are the most important thing. So even if you kill 10 probes, your opponent can still re rearrange them so he's mining gas. And a lot of that uh, minerals is semi-superfluous. Uh, it's useful, but if it costs you phoenixes, it's not worth it. All right, both these players approaching three Stargates. Here's third Stargate just now about to finish. Oh, he's so. making it around the main. Oh, there he goes right toward that probe line. But Sase coming forward as well. We're going to have Phoenixes on Phoenixes here. Units tab again. It's 13 to 9, 13 to 7, 12 to 6. Hero essentially doubling his opponent's Phoenix count. There's the Photon Overcharge onto the Nexus. Hero definitely getting the better end of that deal. And again, now both these players are both going to be making three Phoenixes at a time with Hero just now adding on his armor upgrade. Hero is working on the first armor upgrade. Sasa is getting plus two weapons. Hero with all the advantages as far as supply goes, but Sasa again has that upgrade advantage. So if he can stall out for long enough to, to try to equalize the army, he's going to be favored if it gets to a max situation. But he's had a really hard time yeah. getting to that point because Hero is so aggressive. He's using his map control. And now even Hero is going for charge. He's a substantial number of warp. It's a substantial Zella force. Uh, I don't know if Sase has an answer to that Zealot count. Oh, I, I guess he's adding, he's, he's going for his own Zealots as well. So it's going to be a, a Zealot war on the ground. Hero is hunting with those Phoenixes. Looking for stuff to kill, going to try to engage there. I think that was a two for one trade in favor of Hero. He might have even targeted down the weakened Phoenixes there. But Hero, as you said, up 131 to 102 in supply. It's now 16 to 12 on that Phoenix count. And we see Hero adding on a Dark Shrine, adding on charge as well. We got plus two weapons on the way here for Hero, but only plus one for Sase. Sase adding on a base at the top side of the map. And Hero is just continuing to increase that supply advantage. One thing we've noticed is both players have cannons in their second and third base, not only to stop the Dark Shrine harassment, but also to help support against Phoenix. Hero is moving out with a substantial Zell Force. 17 to 2. Uh, uh, if he just walks to Sase's third, Sase is going to be overrun. Uh, yeah. Both an overcharge and cannons can help, but against that qu quantity of Charge zealots, lots too. it's not going to be enough. Uh, perhaps if he can win the Phoenix War, then he can pick off the ground forces, but that's a big if because Hero has a lot of Phoenixes. All right, here comes Hero across the map, warping in. Look at all those zealots he's warping in. He's just going to try to overwhelm oh, his opponent. Sase is going for Stalkers and Blink, a very interesting... Uh, what he's going to try to do is pick off Phoenixes and then run away with the stock. Yeah, kite away. There's the time warp onto the ramp. There's force fields as well, and you can't get by those force fields. 
Uh, but a Stalkers, of course, can shoot over them. So maybe that's an idea there from Sase. Not bad at all. And as you said, Blink on the way. Plus two weapons, though. About He's to actually here not only Phoenixes anymore. Sase has totally stopped Phoenix production going for pure Blink Stalkers. Uh, I don't know if they'll get it up. They'll charge it off, of course, do the Blink Stalkers in a straight on engagement. The charge offs are ravaging the third base. Yeah, charge offs going straight into that third. The Stalkers going to start retreating. Phoenix is coming forward. Now we're going to have the Phoenix versus Phoenix battle. We were looking for it. It's hard to tell who's winning that, but supply shows 132 to 97 in favor of here. The third is essentially dead there from Sase. Keep in mind, Hero has a perfectly functioning third back home. Sase taking out uh, a few of the Phoenixes, but Hero staying back essentially uh, overall from that. And it doesn't even matter because, the, again, the third is gone. The fourth is definitely going to die, which means the economy for Hero is just going to be so much better, adding on Archons even. And, and I feel like Sase is going to have a lot of trouble dealing with, the, with these added Archons to this Phoenix Zealot army. He, he is. I mean, he has that, that fourth Nexus finished, but he can't mine from there because he lost too many probes. Now even his natural been absolutely massacred. Oh my gosh. Hero knows he's safe to do this because Sase's Phoenix is at the top of the map trying to defend that fourth base. And Sase is taking so much economic damage. Uh, he has a lower oh, Phoenix count as flying well. flying over the Archons there. Great shots there from the Archon Stalkers trying to come in and help. But the Phoenix is now going to pursue those from Sase Hero. Taking down every single Phoenix from his opponent Sase. Desperately trying to add in more Stalkers. Blink. Just now finishing, but that's not going to help at all at this point. And now here's up 120 to 37 supply, and he's definitely going to be moving on. There's the GG hero, takes the series 3 to 1, and advances to the semifinal, the second semifinal, to play the winner of Thorazine and Creator. Very well played there from here. I was. And Hero really showed his experience in the match of knowing when to engage, when to back up, and also knowing how to transition, knowing that you want to spend all your gas on those Phoenixes, so going for the charge lots. Tuner gas on charge, but the units are minerals only, uh, and that's really what, what pushed him to that victory. That high charge out count had no answer. Yeah. Um, w uh, you know, Sase, he showed he's, he's a great player, though. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, going that far, going that long against Hero, staying in the game, and of course taking game one, very impressive, but ultimately Hero just having too much. And uh, he's going to be moving on in the Winter Exhibition. Unfortunately for Sase, he will be eliminated, but I'm hopeful for his future in Heart of the Swarm, because again, he is one of the best Protoss players out there. Uh, I think you can follow him on Twitter, so definitely research that. I'm not exactly sure what his ID is, but definitely uh, he's a very active tweeter, has a lot of cool stuff to say. Um, now, coming up next is going to be Rules of Engagement. What do we got today? Today we're looking at some games from MC, of course, MC versus MVP. The match MC said was going to be the finals of the tournament, unfortunately, uh, he didn't back up his words and he got knocked out later on. But it was a great series. MC really showcased some Oracle play. We're going to really highlight analyzing Oracle play against Terran today nice. in Rules of Engagement. That's awesome. Of course, Stargates in against Terran, something that Protosses have always wanted to do, very micro-intensive. You, if, you're, if you're not used to handling a lot of different hockey, it's probably not for you. No. But definitely looking forward to that episode. Of course, Sase, I just looked it up. It's Hello Sase on Twitter, so check him out. Um, of course, that's going to conclude today's edition of the Winter Exhibition. Stay tuned throughout the week. Of course, let's take a look at the updated bracket. I think we have that for you. Um, and of course, then we'll have a, a schedule to remind you of what's going on. There we see Hero advancing over Sase, which means we have Marine King, Bly, Hero. And then, of course, the winner of Creator and Thorzin will be our final four PZT in the, yes. the final four. So far. Yep, PZT, and there'll be another either Tyrant or Protoss joining them. Yep. Uh, so far, the Koreans haven't lost yet, uh, except for C, who lost another Korean. Right. Uh, and that was the theme of the MLG Winner Championships as well. Will Thorzin or Bly be one of the people to actually take a best of five <laughs> from these Korean Giants? We'll see. Let's take, it, let's take a look at that. Um, the updated, or let's take a look at the schedule. Of yes. course, today, Hero versus Sase. Tomorrow, again, Creator versus Thorzain. Wednesday and Thursday, the semifinals. And the final will be on Friday. Again, 5 p.m. Eastern every single day. Do not miss it. Of course, if you do miss it, VODs will be available in 1080p. Uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash official MLG SCT. Guys, we hope you've been enjoying the coverage so far of the Winter Exhibition. It's been a pleasure bringing that to you. And again, tune in tomorrow for Creator versus Thorzane. But first, remember, stay tuned next because we got Rules of Engagement with Axlab. This has been Axel Toss and Axlab. We'll see you then.